Rugby Championship 2021, Springboks heading to Australia to take on the Wallabies. Very differing fortunes for both of these sides thus far. Uh, the number one rank in the world, Springboks, taking on the number seven ranked Wallabies, who are under a wee bit of pressure, having suffered back-to-back-to-back -back 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 losses against the All Blacks. So they are none from two in the Rugby Championship, plus their Bledisloe game. Uh, after winning that kind of French series, it'd be a good time for Dave Rennie's boys to turn things around. On the flip side, the South Africans dropping that first game to the British and Irish Lions, but then storming through to win that series and then win pretty comfortably both their games against Argentina. They are second in the Rugby Championship behind only the All Blacks with just that one bonus point separating teams. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to like about this game. We'll go through the teams, some of the stats, the recent results, predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to play out. So, like I said, it is on uh, this Saturday, 8 p.m. local time. Uh, morning game, I believe, in South Africa. Kind of late evening for us here in New Zealand. Argentina, what is that, morning? I'm not sure. Late afternoon? Goodness me. Uh, too many time zones, folks. But um, in recent times, it has been South Africa. South Africa have got the last two. Uh, we're looking at the last five results. It's a real mixed bag you can see there. Uh, but the two most recent games have both gone South Africa's way. 35-17 uh, in 2019. And the second game of the Rugby Championship 2018 was 23-12. Uh, but both of those games in South Africa... Last game in Australia was the one at Suncorp 2018, and that was an Aussie win 23-18. Prior to that, a couple of draws. So there's not a heck of a lot between the teams, but if you're looking at the overall score from the last five games, uh, you're looking at an average 25-20 in South Africa's favor. But again, you got to keep in mind, uh, the Aussies are at home for this one. Goodness me, that wind is brutal today. Um, for the lineups, the Aussies have made a big call uh, it's been predicted, it's been coming for ages, but Quade Cooper, who hasn't played for the Wallabies for about four years, has gotten the call to start against the Springboks. And the Springboks lineup is looking pretty mean. We'll get there in a second, but um, maybe they're sparing Noah Lolosio because he's had a wee bit of a rough time. Uh, Lolosio is not a bad player, man. He, he played pretty composed in that French series, but he's come a little bit unstuck against the All Blacks. So maybe it's time to give him a wee break. I don't know, it's... It's a hard one with the psychology. If a guy's out of form, do you kind of give him a vote of confidence and let him uh, rebuild? Or do you think, man, two games against the world champions will give him a rest and maybe give him another crack at Argentina? Uh, not sure. But either way, the veteran Quade Cooper, who is not going to be worried about kind of who he's playing, he'll just be happy to be back in the green and gold. Uh, he is there at number 10. Uh, Tate McTermott is alongside him, so that'll be kind of a new partnership. Like in terms of long-term investment, this is one that's not, I would think, going to have a heck of a lot of pay. But this is about kind of trying to get a result now. I mean, you could have gone with Reese Hodge as well, who's another guy who plays a bit of 10 uh, for the Wallabies. He's on the bench, but no, nah, it is Quaid, which speaks to we need to do something and get it done now. Uh, Angus Bell, Falao Fuenga, and Alan Alatoa are the front row, so Bell is a change. Uh, he swaps with James Slipper, so Bell was on the bench for that last game. Like I said, they have swapped, but the Aussie scrum, to be honest, has been pretty decent. So uh, they'll be tested at another level, you would imagine, with the Springboks coming to town. But against the All Blacks, especially in their last game, Aussie scrum was very, very good. Uh, Rodder comes up from the bench to start alongside Matt Phillip. That means Darcy Swain is out of the 23, and Rob Leota potentially gets a debut uh, if he comes off the bench. He is in the 23 for the first time. Uh, he's a bit of a big unit, so look for him to kind of carry against some tired players. Uh, later on in the game, assuming he comes on, uh, Swinton Hooper and Valtini is the same uh, back row. Valtini, I mean, he's a big unit of a guy as well, and sometimes he really throws his weight around and gets involved, and other times he seems a wee bit anonymous. So we need to see the dude who throws his weight around because he's got a pretty big legend of a player uh, up against him. But Valtini, man, he's a guy with a really heap of potential, but like I said, it's a bit... Kind of hit and miss as to what we see. Michael Hooper continues that kind of captain fantastic role. There's been a lot of uh, talk about him on um, social media about just how good a player he, he is. And, um, you know, he needs the team to kind of step up to be more his level uh, because he's like a warrior week in, week out. Last week, blood down him. Still played, you know, all the minutes he could. So, um, yeah, he's uh, he's a ever-present figure at number seven. And Lockie Swinton is that kind of... Um, you know, a bit of an enforcer there at number six, so he'll be looking to get in the Springboks' face as well. At some point, surely you're going to see Swinton and Itzabeth, um, you know, kind of 
holding each other's collars and having some words about you know gardening and other other you know social topics uh mcdermott and cooper like i mentioned 9 10 uh karevi and ikitao continue 12 13 karevi up against dalende is a huge battle of the beef um yeah both those guys probably big units so karevi had an immediate impact when he came into the squad uh last week ikitao was kind of the young guy so he will need to uh step up he'll be playing against lokanyo um if you can learn from a dude, that's a good guy to be kind of uh, up against to see where you are at in your own game. But Ikitao is only a young man, so um, he'll need that kind of experience with Karevi next to him to, to kind of guide him. Callaway Banks and uh, Korobeti are the back three. Korobeti re recovering from that boot to the face. Uh, seems to be still fit to play. Uh, Banks... Banks is like consistently Dave Rennie's guy at fullback, but he's not really set the world alight in 2021. So uh, let's hope we can see a bit from him. Callaway, on the other hand, has been pretty pretty sharp since he's come into the Wallabies fold. Uh, the bench, Kaitu'u also gets his debut if he comes on a hooker. Uh, slipper, Tupo. Tupo will look to put the pressure on when he comes on. Um, Rennie seems to like him as a bit of an impact sub, the big tight head. Uh, Leota, as I mentioned, Pete Samu, Nick White, Reese Hodge, and Jordan uh, Pataya round out the bench. So yeah, it's a, it's a slightly changed Wallabies squad. Um, I mean, Cooper being the most notable, but otherwise it seems to be mostly kind of tinkering without kind of wholesale changes. Uh, but then the Cooper one is is very much a, a big one. Uh, for South Africa, man, it's, that's very much almost the Rugby World Cup final team, isn't it? There's a heap of big guns in the South African team. Um, it was kind of interesting as to what they would do with their selections because they've had a wee bit of time off in quarantine, obviously, the South Africans. Uh, they have got New Zealand on the horizon, but they're clearly not taking the Australians lightly at all because that's that's a very strong team. Kitsoff, Mbunambi, and Malherba, that's the three guys who were on the bench in their last game a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's an all Rugby World Cup final um, front row. So, yeah, as I mentioned, the Aussie front row was good last week, but this will be an extra level test. Uh, Itzabeth comes in for Ori, and Tiyaka is there, so... Again, man, Rugby World Cup winning uh, locking duo. So it's a Rugby World Cup winning type five. And then Khaleesi, Mostert, and Famulan. Again, Rugby World Cup guys, although Mostert uh, in the you know the uh, the back row rather than the second row. So interestingly, they've got three locks. They haven't got any lock replacements on the bench, but they brought that up in the press conference as well. And uh, Coach Nidava's pretty much like, well, i got three locks starting. So... It doesn't really matter if I don't have a lock on the bench, even if it looks a bit funny uh, to have Fun Start and Smith and Visa all there, like three Lucys on the bench. But whoever goes off from the locks, uh, either either Mostert will get directly replaced, or if it's it's a Beth or Diaka, then Mostert will just jump in. Um, for Mullen, man, how great is it to see him back? He's been out for a long time. Obviously, missed the British and Irish Lions series. He was pretty disappointed. He'll be itching to go. Uh, he comes in for Visa. Um, yeah, man, he's. He's been out for too long. Uh, I think rugby fans across the board, maybe not Australian fans in this instance, will be pretty happy to see him back. Uh, and also Faf de Klerk is back after missing a few games. So Corbus Reinach kind of was the stand-in, but um, Faf is back. So, I mean, we expect to see the box kick and the kind of defensive harrying that Faf does. That's that's his game. So that will that will rear its head again. That's not the right phrase, but you know what I mean. Uh, Faf is back. He's going to make guys' lives miserable. He's going to be getting in their faces. So uh, the, the, the Wallabies guys will know that, and um, they're not going to have any illusions about uh, the pressure that he'll put them under. Pollard's there at 10, so kind of steady as she goes. Delinda and Um has been one of the world's best midfields in recent times, so... Um, it's good to have Karevi back to kind of match that. But like I mentioned, Ikitao is kind of the odd man out amongst the four midfielders and that he is the kind of inexperienced guy, but um, he's also got a heap of potential, so he'll get a good test. Uh, and Corsi does come in for Colby, who was out injured, but Nkosi is, he's done that before. Then they did that semifinals, right? Nkosi comes in for Colby. Different style player, but you're not losing a heck of a lot. Obviously, Colby's got that kind of X-factor steps, but uh, Nkosi is, is more powerful than he looks and is lightning quick. Um, and Mopimpi is class there with uh, LaRue as well. So it's still a heck of a back three. So changes, yes, but it's a pretty mean looking team. Pretty mean. Uh, replacements, Malcolm Marks, Oxenche, Vincent Koch. Again, pretty strong looking guys. Inche is back to see uh, him alongside Koch. It's good to see uh, Van Staden is also back. Um, Herschel Yankees is also back. I remember Hendrickson was injured. So uh, they've kind of had to bring in. The likes of uh, Herschel Yankees and, um, you know, Dwayne Vermeulen back from injury. So it's good to see these guys back fit and ready to go. 
Yeah. I mean, both sides have certainly got some good talent. That's that's for sure. But one of these sides, the majority of them, played in the Rugby World Cup final. And um, yeah, the other lot is a bunch of a bunch of young guys who got a bunch of potential who in 2023 uh, will be kicking on. But I worry about them maybe being a touch young and inexperienced for this side. But then again, they've just played the All Blacks three weeks in a row. So, well, not three weeks directly in a row, but three games in a row. So, yeah, they've, they've been under the pump. Um, the box have talked about how they've had good prep. Uh, they've been conditioning. On the other hand, uh, the Wallabies played a game on Sunday. So it's a kind of shortish turnaround for them. That may be a factor, but it's kind of the case of, do the Wallabies have a bit more match sharpness? If not, the legs to go the 80, whereas maybe the the, the box, maybe if it has a little bit of rust built, it's only been a couple of weeks, but they have been in quarantine. So um, yeah, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, which which one comes out on top. In terms of the stats, you look at the uh, the Wallabies, they're averaging six turnovers, six turnovers, one uh, per game, which is the most of any of the four rugby championship sides. So they are a threat in pinching the ball from opposition. Um, you know, the other side's getting kind of a 4.5, 4, uh, maybe 5. So it's, it's not huge, um, you know, night and day differences between the other teams, but they are the highest ranked of the, the four rugby championship teams. But man, against the All Blacks, they were conceding 10. Well, against the All Blacks, they were conceding 13 clean breaks a game. And if you include the French series, it's still 10 clean breaks a game they're conceding. So the Wallabies, when their defense is getting undone, it's getting properly undone. And we saw that against the All Blacks. Turnover ball was absolutely killer for them. So that's that's the ob- too many intercepts, man. That's the obvious kind of fix that needs to be made. But like I mentioned, their scrum numbers were great in the last game. But South Africa scrum numbers are also very good. Uh, South Africa, in terms of the four rugby championship teams, is conceding the least ball. They're the, the safest team kind of with ball in hand. They're the least likely to make errors. But that being said, they're also the least likely to throw offload. So it's probably not... Um, a stretch that these two numbers uh, are kind of linked. Like the other sides are throwing seven, eight, nine offloads a game. That's Argentina, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. Whereas the box are throwing kind of two or three. So they're, they're, they're not an offloading team unless it kind of really counts. So, uh, and they're also going to the mall more than the other teams. Uh, most teams, uh, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, mauling kind of three, four times a game. South Africa is about seven. So expect to see them try to exert that forward dominance and you've you've seen that in the picks by only having two um two backs on the bench i forgot to mention it's yankees and uh Willemse for for the box so they have gone with the 6-2 split the bomb squad effect again and um, i think we should expect to see that kind of uh push the aussie guys towards the end of the game um like i mentioned it's 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 a pretty kind of even split in recent times um, the box haven't won in Australia for a while. I think it goes back to, was it 2015 or 2013, 2013 maybe. Um, but that being said, the Springboks with this World Cup winning team, number one in the world, are still favourites. Uh, the rugby forecast algorithm says South Africa by nine. The bookies have got South Africa by eight. So despite the fact they're away from home, coming out of quarantine, they are predicted to get a win. I mean, obviously, I hope the Wallabies can really kick on because they've they've shown really good periods of the game uh, against the All Blacks and what are the, their lineout numbers are in like the 80s but it's the key lineouts that they're missing like it's just those those key moments that are just going wrong for them they're starting to put the All Blacks defense under pressure and then they throw an intercept pass and it gets all undone so it's like all that hard work seems to get thrown out the window uh, whereas the Springboks are, are not the kind of team to um, to give up real easy chances either as is shown in the stats so yeah it's going to be an interesting mix to see how things play out i am keen to see how it gets done uh you guys let me know your thoughts how do you think this one's going to go do you think the springboks can get their first win in australia for a while or do you think the wallabies can at last uh register a win in the rugby championship because they are kind of bottom of the four teams at the moment but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts and um yeah i'll talk to you guys again soon